So I started to slow down, and what it was, it wasn't a moose, you know. Um, I was slowing down, and we're gradually getting faster. I was doing about 70, and we're slowing down, and this thing came out from underneath the pine tree and just started walking down the side of the, the hillside there. And we're slowing, and it's looking, and my buddy's screaming, what the hell is that? You know, what is that? And I'm, I, I couldn't even talk. I was just amazed at what I was seeing. It got to about the middle of the road. It stopped and slowed down, and I'd say I was probably about 35, maybe 40 feet from this thing. And it's sitting there looking at us, and it's kind of like hunkering down a little bit, looking in the car. And it turned around. It spun around. I've never seen anything so big run so fast in my life was looking down at us walked up the embankment sat there stood back again and like was at the tree line looking didn't seem phased or anything else like that and then walked back into the tree line i can hear something in the bushes right there there something really big I went down there, and then that's when I, I decided to leave. Well, I, I, got a, I got a strange smell. So I started walking out of the woods, and uh, I, I felt something. I don't know, like I said earlier, it didn't feel right. And I didn't know if a bear was watching me. So anyway, uh, so I turned around like that real fast, and I seen something, man, like that. I said, whoa, what the heck was that? Well, I thought it was a bear, a black bear. And I was thinking to myself, man, I said, black bear don't move that fast. And uh, they don't move that fast. So I got up and started walking away again, right? Well, when I walked away, I heard... Snap. It was about ten times louder than that. Yeah. I said, uh-oh. <laughs> so anyway, so I just, I kept walking. So... I said, well, no, I'm going to have to face my fears here or whatever. So I stopped, and I turned around, and it, I thought it was a black bear when I first seen it. And it was standing behind the hunting suckle bushes, and uh, and it, it stunk. Yeah. See, they got an odor gland like a, like a skunk, uh -huh. and they can let it off when they want to. So people say, well, I'll smell it. Uh, before you see a Bigfoot or something, you always smell it, and that ain't true. Because they got an odor gland like a skunk. They can let that off when they want to, because of, it's like it's a signal for danger to their family, you know, the other Bigfoots, or whatever. And it's a warning too to stay away from them, whatever. It's just different things, you know. So anyway, I stood there. And I looked. And I was about from here to your car, where I was. That's how far away I was. And uh, I said, "Man," I said, "That's no black bear." And it was a Bigfoot, man. I knew it. When I seen it, I knew what it was. And I've never seen a Bigfoot in my life. But I've read books about it, magazines. Like, you remember a long time ago, they had the detective magazines and have stories about Bigfoot and monsters and stuff. Yeah. Right. Every once yeah. in a while. Yeah. Well, you remember? Oh, yeah. I mean, it, it, see if you remember this. Dallas probably does. But anyway, uh, my mom had this detective magazine. And I, it's about had a story about Bigfoot in there. She yeah, said, "You want to read this?" I said, well, "I guess so." That's so I was good. reading it, you know. Yeah, so I read it. It's just a couple of pages, you know. So I read it. It was about Bigfoot. What happened up in Canada? Yeah. There was about five or six hunters, and they was in this in the cabin, and it had pictures of the cabin and all kinds of stuff like that, and it showed blood and footprints and everything, and it's where where a Bigfoot. Evidently, I don't think captured them people and killed them or what. They never did find them people. There's five or six hunters. I can't remember exactly. There's five or six. I don't know one or two. They what never did find them. 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 And it was blood and footprints, like human footprints and everything. Mm. And they, they said Bigfoot did it, but they couldn't prove it. And to this day, as far as I know, they've never found them people. And I read that story, and back then, I was skeptic about Bigfoot, like a lot of people are. Mm -hmm. I didn't. I said, "Ah, that ain't true." You know, right. I don't believe that bullshit. <laughs> you know, I mean, I didn't. I right. didn't believe. It. I, I was skeptical. You know, like a lot of people are. I've been around a lot of people like that. I, mm. I, I understand where they're coming from. You know, and I said, "Well, I ain't seen that thing." So, well, it probably ain't true. It's some big lie. You know. Well, I didn't give no thought years and years down the road. Mm. So anyway. Uh, I don't know if you ever read that book or not about that that story, if you've heard it or not. But uh, anyway, it's supposed to be a true story and everything. But 
So anyway, like I say, I was out there in the woods, and I seen that creature. I knew it was a Bigfoot, man, and when I seen that thing, it was every bit of 10 feet tall. And, uh, and like him, uh, honeysuckle bushes, they come about like up to here, to his chest. Wow. And it was another, it was a good three foot taller than the weeds when it was up to here. So he, he was like, you know, that much taller than those. So like 10, 11 uh, feet. He's a good 10 feet tall. And you were pretty close to him. From here to Bill's car. Wow. Rough, roughly. So 40 yeah. feet or so. Something like that, 40, 50 feet, roughly. He did it again. I heard that. Look at Luna, man. She's getting excited about it, too. Yep. She's also looking down the road. Yep. Not normal for animals to, to respond to you like that. Well, what if it's people? We know it's not because it follows us up into the woods. That's true. It, was, it had its leg kind of propped up, uh -huh. and I could see it blowing in the wind, and the hair was blowing underneath the leg, kind of like that. And snow had, like, uh, I call them snow dingleberries. My dog with long hair used to get them in the winter, and, and it was, I could see them flapping in the wind. And that's, Did you see its feet? No, I never saw its feet, no. No, what he was actually the... standing in a snow bank, so I never saw feet. I, I saw from about, like, I don't know, maybe quarter inch up you know a quarter of his shin on the way up but everything else was like in that big snowbank what about the chest what did the chest look like um chest was actually very manly and that had the least amount of hair next to around where the facial area was was there anything peculiar about the face nose mouth to you or the shape of the head yeah um well the shape of the head was actually just like ours but bigger like just overall it fit the size of this thing and it was very squared off in the jaw. The nose looked very human. Um, the mouth was real long. That was that was probably the biggest part I noticed mm. on it. And the reason why I could tell where the mouth started and ended was because it had this like kind of white frothy stuff, like it had dry mouth or something in the corners. So where mine and yours and everybody else's mouth comes to an end here, it was actually over on the sides, almost closer to its ears. But other than that, it looked very very human. I kind of caught something that was kind of strange in my eye. The The side of the pond was all, had little rocks on it, had bigger rocks. Um, and I observed this pretty big black, maybe dark brown to black figure, uh, upright figure, step up onto this rock. And I would say it's very slightly looked towards where we were in the water. And at that point, my friend and I had both seen it together, and we saw where it was. So we were trying to get my his dad's uh, attention, and we didn't get his attention in time enough to have him look towards what we saw. But uh, we, we were adamant what we saw. He said it was a game warden, it was a bear, it was a person. Um, back then, we were describing as, uh, if you saw Chewbacca, it would be very similar in color, maybe darker. And I hear this whistle, like a, like something like that, and then I hear like a crash. So I looked to my left, and I didn't see anything, and then when I turned around, about, about, about 20 feet, 20 some feet away, it was standing up against a tree. And it turned its head like this, turned its whole shoulders like this and looked right at me. When it did that, it sort of snarled. I could see the eye teeth. They're, they they actually have like little fat, I don't know how long it was, but the mouth was real long. The teeth weren't real white, but they were like a yellowish color. Yeah, very, very, I mean, and to be honest with you, I sort of, I started tingling. I don't, you know, I, I dropped my head. I was afraid to, to look for very long. I didn't want to think that like I was going to come after it. So I, I put my head down like this, but I'm still watching, you know, like this. And it's looking at me like this, and it's, still, it's starting to rock back and forth. And I don't know what's going on, and I'm kind of like, I'm shaking. And, uh, hold on. And then I heard um, a whistle as if somebody would 
really quietly whistle to like to let you know they're there or to call a dog or not loud not at all and i knew you were down down uh lower right. so i knew it couldn't be you and it's almost exactly the way that you call you let me know that you're there that's so weird it was really freaking uh, it was creepy it was really creepy there's no people up there not that i know of no, I I, we were, i'll we bet anything the there's people. no we're so, the only people in here so no i didn't feel good about that you know? was out. It was pretty light out. I could I could still fairly see well, and I didn't have. Sorry. When I seen the teeth, and it was rocking back and forth, that that, that shook me. You know, I'm, it didn't turn the whole way. It just turned its shoulders. Yeah. Because the reason, because I, I played this over my mind a thousand times, it was maybe three four feet off the path on a tree. Okay, it wasn't on the path. It was three four feet. See, apparently the guys had taken the other path. Apparently, when I caught him turning around, he was looking down where they were at. I don't know if he was watching. You know, I'm assuming he was watching them. Right. And um, th the size of this thing is phenomenal. I mean, I'm talking uh, between three and a half and four foot wide. And I'm talking when he turned to the side, the thickness of the chest was probably two and a half to three feet thick. That's, I mean, big, barely chested. When it turned... I was looking right at it because I hadn't dropped my head yet, and it sort of like flashed white and then went to black. Like like the black with the shiny coat, you know right. what I'm saying? It almost looked like it was sprayed with oil or something like that. The hair was not this comb shit. It was like burnt, you know, knotted and things like this. You know, and when it started rocking, I could see the hair on the back of its arm like slinging back and forth. Well, over the body it was, but believe it or not, it looked like it had like a... A hairdo, it, like hair coming down along the back, it had like um, uh, hair across the face and across the chin like a beard, right. you know, except for right around the eyes, real heavy brow, that type of thing, and around the lips, you know, it was, there was, it was, you could, you could, you could make, when, when it grimaced, you know, it, I could make out the long mouth and everything, so, wow. you know, it's, it's one of these situations where when it started rocking, I really got, I, I got shaken so bad that I put my head down and I, I, I you know, I, I don't know how long it stood there rocking, to be honest with you. It could have been one second, but it felt like an eternity. Mm -hmm. And then it took off. And I, I'm going to tell you right now that when it took off, it was kind of like I seen like one, two steps, crash, crash, and it was gone. I don't know what, I didn't even turn my head to, to try to follow it. I still had my head down. I could only see like as far as my eyes would let me see. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I seen this, and I'm standing there, and I'm like in disbelief, and I'm, my body's tingling. You know, I may have even pissed myself a little bit. I don't know. I'm standing there, and I, I'm like, there's no way in hell that I am walking down there. But where did they go? Where did they go? You know that type of thing. Uh, so I finally. I finally turn around and I walk back to the car and I get in the car and I wind the windows up and about 45 minutes later I'm sitting in the back of the car and my buddy comes up and he says, where the hell were you at? I said, what do you mean? He says, we're all done. We've got our limit. We're, well, you got to get down there and get yours. I said, it could it could, it could, it could have won clear as high as nine foot tall, but between seven and a half feet, nine foot tall. I, I'm going to tell you now I never went back. People, you know, I told a couple of my buddies this. That like they're they're like well how did you never go back and why didn't you go I I, I couldn't bring myself to go back I couldn't I honestly couldn't.